Hello and welcome to another Magic Duels gameplay. Today we're taking a look at Abzan Revolt, a white, black and green synergy deck built around the Revolt mechanic from the aptly named Ether Revolt set. So a very tricky deck to build since there's a lot of things you need to take into consideration. Of course you need a good mix of enablers and payoff cards for the Revolt mechanic. And we also have a very low curve in a three color deck. So that means that our mana base is going to include a lot of basic lands so we can play those untapped. So we can make sure we can play all these one drops in time. So a lot of things to balance here. So let's take a look at the entire deck. But of course, first we can take a look at the revolt mechanic in general, which states whenever a permanent we controlled left the battlefield this turn, we get to enable revolt, which is going to give us a number of different benefits on a number of different cards. Uh, in the Green Wheel Liberator's case, if we have enabled Revolt, then the Liberator enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. So a lot of different cards with Revolt, with a lot of different abilities. So let's take a look at the entire deck, starting out with a Walking Ballista. The deck does also have a plus one plus one counter sub theme, which helps justify the inclusion of Walking Ballista. It's also just a decent card by itself, as it is a mana sink late in the game. And of course, when you have those plus one plus one counter synergies, it's even better. And of course, it also helps enable revolt because when you remove the last plus one plus one counter from the ballista, it goes to the graveyard and you have successfully enabled revolt. Then we also have Green Belt Rampager, which is a great revolt enabler, since for a single green we get a 3-4 that says when the Green Belt Rampager enters the battlefield we have to pay 2 energy, but if we can't then we have to return the Rampager to our hand and we get 1 energy. So that basically means the first two times we're gonna cast the Rampager, we're gonna return it to our hand and we are gonna enable revolt for just a single green mana, because the Rampager of course is a permanent that got returned to our hand, so that does satisfy revolt. And then, of course, when we do finally resolve the Rampager and pay two energy, we get a nice 3-4 body, so it's not like it's a bad creature by itself. And has some other neat synergies in the deck as well, as we will get to in a second. Then we have one of the cheap payoff cards for Revolt, Narnum Renegade, which for single green is a 1-2 with Death Touch, which is already reasonable by itself, since it trades on the ground with pretty much any creature. But with Revolt, the Renegade enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it, so that makes it a 2-3, which is pretty big for a one drop, and of course still has Death Touch, so it can still trade with a lot of creatures. And of course the plus one plus one counter also synergizes with our plus one plus one counter sub-theme. Then we have Renegade Map, which is another Revolt enabler, since it's a one mana artifact, enters the battlefield tapped, and then we can tap the Renegade Map and sacrifice it to search our library for a basic land and put it into our hand. And then, of course, that will satisfy Revolt, since the permanent went to the graveyard, and also helps us fix our mana in our three color deck. It is a little clunky, since it does enter the battlefield tapped, so if you top deck it, you're not going to be able to enable Revolt right away. So that's why we only have the two copies in the deck, since we don't want too many of them, since including Renegade Map also means reducing the number of lands you play in the deck, otherwise you're going to be flooded. But then again, if you have too many maps and not enough lands, then that's a recipe for disaster as well. So that's why we only have the two copies. Another great revolt enabler is Unbridled Growth, which is an enchantment for single green that enchants one of our lands. And then we can tap the enchanted land to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. So it also kind of fixes our mana in a way. And then at any point we can sacrifice the Unbridled Growth and then draw a card, so that's another neat way to enable revolt. And of course, if we don't need the mana fixing, then we can just cash it in for an extra card if we want to. Then we also have Fatal Push, just great removal spell, also happens to have revolt, but we would run it even if it didn't have the second part. Then we have Green Wheel Liberator, which we already showed. So just a 2-1 for 2 mana, that with Revolt gets 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters, which of course makes it a 4-3 for 2 mana, which is quite the bargain, and of course also works with our plus 1 plus 1 counter sub-theme. Then we have a Scrounging Bandar, which looks pretty innocent, but is actually one of the key cards in the deck, since it not only works well with our 
plus one plus one counter sub theme since it's a zero zero that comes into play with two plus one plus one counters but it can also help us enable revolt because at the beginning of our upkeep we can move any number of plus one plus one counters from the bandar onto another target creature and of course if we remove all the plus one plus one counters from the bandar the bandar will die go to the graveyard and that will have enabled revolt for that turn so a pretty sweet card and of course works very well with Renegade Rallier, which is one of the payoff cards for a vault, which can return a permanent with converted mana cost two or less from the graveyard into play, which is ideal with a scrounging bandar of course. Then we have Winding Constrictor, which is the big synergy card for our plus one plus one counter sub theme, since anytime a plus one plus one counter would be put on one of our creatures, an additional plus one plus one counter is put on that creature instead. And the same goes with energy counters that will be put on a player, and the only energy card in the deck is the Green Belt Rampager. So if we return it to our hand, then we get two energy instead of just one, so we can uh, play the Rampager the second time instead of the third time. Then we have Bygon Bishop, which is one of the ways we can gain a lot of card advantage in this deck, since this deck does have a lot of creatures with converted mana cost 3 or less, which means whenever we play one of those creatures we get to investigate, which means we get a clue token that we can then sacrifice for 2 mana to draw a card, and of course a clue token going to the graveyard also does satisfy revolt. Bygon Bishop also works very well with Greenbelt Rampager, since you can play the Rampager multiple times and generate multiple clues. Then we have Solemn Recruit, which is another Great Revolt payoff card. 2-2, double strike, and at the beginning of our end step, if we enabled Revolt, then we get to put a plus one plus one counter on Solemn Recruit, so also goes well with our Winding Constrictor. The mana cost is a little difficult, double white in a deck that also wants to cast Winding Constrictor on turn two, but uh, we can make it work thanks to cards like Unbridled Growth and Renegade Map. Then we have only one copy of Vengeful Rebel, because our three drops are already pretty stacked, but it is a pretty great card against creature decks, since if we enable Revolt, we get to give a creature minus three minus three until end of turn, which is gonna kill a lot of the smaller creatures in the game, and it also just gives us a 3-2 creature, which is not bad by itself. Then we also have a Tireless Tracker, which is another way to generate clue tokens that can then enable Revolt, and also happens to work well with our plus one plus one counter sub-theme, just kind of does it all. And then another great payoff card for Revolt is Renegade Rallier, which is a 3-2 that when we enable Revolt we get to return a permanent with converted mana cost 2 or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. So this can return creatures, but can also return enchantments like Unbridled Growth or even lands like Evolving Wilds if we perhaps have a Tireless Tracker in play and can generate a bunch more clues. So a great grindy card and a great payoff card for Revolt. Then we also have two copies of Anguished and Making, kind of as our catch-all removal, because the deck can be pretty weak to Planeswalkers, so this is a good way to take care of those. And then finally we also have Sky Sovereign Console Flagship, which helps shore up our weaknesses to Planeswalkers and to Flyers, since we get a 6-5 Flyer with Crew 3, and we have a lot of 3-powered creatures in the deck, as you've seen. And when the Sky Sovereign enters a battlefield or attacks, it gets to deal 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker the opponent controls. So it can also just destroy creature decks when it goes uncontested. And then our mana base, a lot of basics, 3 planes, 2 swamps and 7 forests. So that means we often get to cast our 1 drops on turn 1. And then 2 Woodland Cemetery, 2 Isolated Chapel, and 2 Sun Petal Grove. So we're not even running the creature lands which enter the battlefield tapped, just because we want to have as many untapped lands as possible. And then we also have Evolving Wilds, which is great with Tireless Tracker, but of course also helps enable Revolt, because it is a permanent that goes to the graveyard. So just a great card in the deck and you will often want to save this until later in the game instead of sacrificing it right away unless of course you just need the colored mana right away. So that's the deck and now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, let's take a look at our opener which doesn't actually have any revolt creatures but it is a pretty good control hand with just Fatal Push, and Making and Sky Sovereign, so I actually think we can keep this. Our mana is also pretty decent. 
All right, opponent on the colorless runes of Oran Reef, so they could be on some sort of Eldrazi deck as we find another isolated chapel. So these come into play untapped once we play the planes. Question there is, do we want to Unbridled Growth? I think we do also makes black mana for the Fatal Push. And if we find a two drop revolt creature, we can already play it. So next turn, I'm probably gonna go planes. Now if we do draw Winding Constrictor, we can't actually play it since this comes into play tapped and this doesn't make green or black mana. But there was no easy way to go around that. I guess we could have played a tapped chapel, but then we don't get to play growth. And there's an Evolving Wilds. Meanwhile, our opponent played a Glid Nest Crane, but they did not find any artifact. So just a 1-3. So I think we want to keep the Evolving Wilds as a Revolt Enabler, so we will just play the Planes and say go. Don't have a ton of 2 mana or 1 mana Revolt creatures, so I'd rather hang on. Alright, opponent with a Seer's Lantern, so they could be on a Metal War Colossus deck here. Ramping into big scary things. Alright, there we go. Solemn Recruit is perfect. So we get to sacrifice the Unbridled Growth. Draw a card and then play Isolated Chapel. And play out a Solemn Recruit. And it will get a plus one plus one counter right away. And next turn we have Narnum Renegades plus Evolving Wilds to enable Revolt for both the Recruit and the Renegade and potentially even Fatal Push. Opponent with Rogue's Passage. And no other play. Could be holding on to a Counterspell here. Um, either way... I think we want to go to combat here. I don't think there's any flash creature we need to play around. So let's go ahead and attack. It's a trap! Alright, I guess there is. But we do have the anguished and making. So we want to float a black, float a white, and float a green. And make sure to kill the Deep Fiend before it can block. And I think we actually just played a chapel here. So that next turn we can play Evolving Wilds and then sack it to enable Revolt for the Renegade and Recruit. Does mean we don't get a plus one plus one counter on the current Recruit, but I think that's fine. Inventor's Fair, another sweet colorless land. And a Gearseeker Serpent, alright, that's actually quite good here. Can't kill it with Fatal Push and it does block our Recruit. But I actually don't mind trading the Recruit for the Serpent here. Enables Revolt for the other Recruit as well. And for the Renegade without having to use the Evolving Wilds. Opponent does accept. And here we have the option of going Recruit plus Renegade, or we can go Bishop plus Renegade and then keep the Evolving Wilds for next turn. I don't think we need to be in a hurry, so I would rather get more value from every single card, which means getting a clue from each creature we play, getting as many Revolt triggers as possible. I guess we can play out the Evolving Wilds, in case we draw another land we want to play. There is of course the 
tireless tracker argument where you want to keep a land in hand. Key to the city. So our opponent pretty serious about making their creatures unblockable here between the rogue's passage and the key. I guess we do have the clue token now to enable revolt, so I guess it's fine to just sack this for a forest. And then we can go sack clue plus play the recruit. And there's a tireless tracker. Still fine here. So I think we can attack with both. So our opponent can't have another Elder Deep Fiend here, so I think it's fine to attack first before doing anything else. And then we will sack the clue and play the recruit. So I want to make sure we have white mana available. Another anguished in making. Play the recruit, trigger our bag and bishop opponent with a glimmer of genius in response. They can't quite find a Metallic Rebuke and cast it here, since they only have the one untapped land and artifact. So Recruit gets a plus one plus one counter right away. Our hand is still pretty good. So I like our position. Wretched Griff. Hard cast, so a 3-4 that draws them a card. So it does block most of our creatures here. And they get to put a plus one plus one counter on it thanks to the Runes of Oran Reef, since it is colorless here, even though it does have a blue mana there. Alright, so what do we want to do now? So I guess our opponent's just dead on board here. We can anguish in making the Ratchet Griff, and we have exactly 10 power in play. So... There were a lot of sweet lines we could have taken there, but I guess just winning is the best we can do. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, let's take a look at our opener, which looks pretty bad actually. Don't have anything great to get back with the Rallyer, our mana is pretty slow. I think we can do better. Alright, this works. So here we have turn 1 Unbridled Growth into turn 2 Renegade with Revolt if we wanted to. Otherwise we can play Renegade now into Bandar, move over the counters and then play Rallyer. I think I like just the Unbridled Growth. And then turn 2 either we go for the Renegade or we go with the Bandar. do need white mana for the recruit and the rallier which we don't currently have if we sacrifice growth which could be an argument for saving it and playing the bandar instead well if we draw two renegades it is pretty tempting to just run them both out there which i think we want to do so given that it's a forest it's fine to sacrifice the unbridled growth otherwise let's say this was a uh, plains we could have floated a green mana here, then sacrificed the Unbridled Growth, and then played the two Renegades. Well, I guess we found a Liberator, but it's probably still better to run out both Renegades here. So, would like to draw a white source, or just another cheap revolt enabler. Opponent with Oath of Chandra to take out one of our renegades, unfortunately. Sorcery speeds, so we don't get to get the benefit of revolt during our turn. Anguished in making not really what we needed here. So, renegade hits for two, and we'll play a bandar which can enable Revolt next turn, potentially, by moving all the counters on the Renegade.
but let's see what the opponent does. Some Petal Grove, so they could be on a four color Super Friends kind of deck, and Radiant Flames is not what we wanted to see. Opponent sweeps the board, and we're left with nothing. So we could run out these Liberator as just a two mana two one. Uh, I guess it's probably still better to run it out. At least we have something going on. So opponent with the one two punch of removal spells. All right, there's another land, but it's not the one we're looking for, unfortunately. Let's attack for two. So maybe got a little too excited with the unbridled growth and should have waited. So we could play out our white spells first, but then again it was our only revolt enabler. And now the opponent with the Gideon, which is gonna make a token, and then Oath of Chandra is also gonna deal us some damage. So yeah, this is definitely one of the more difficult matchups for the deck, since Sweepers plus Planeswalkers is a difficult combination to beat, as we still don't find the white mana we need. So, can attack Gideon here, and the opponent should probably just take the two damage, otherwise they could enable a revolt for us. Let's say we have a white source now, we could go planes into Renegade Rallyer, for example, get back the Liberator and the opponent's in a lot more trouble. But uh, can't punish the opponent for it. I guess they haven't seen any white mana yet. And now Jace is gonna bury us in card advantage. We do have Anguished Unmaking, but that's only going to deal with one of the two problems. I guess something we could have considered was on turn 3, if we found a third land, we could have use the unbridled growth for white mana to play the rallier to enable revolt and then get back the growth so we still have that white mana for the future did find a renegade map now but as i've talked about in the introduction it is not a great top deck since it comes into play tapped so you can't enable revolt right away I guess if our opponent's hand is all removal and no planeswalkers we still have a chance instead opponent with one planeswalker after the other and Janio yielding now reveals three lands so at least they didn't find any creatures and one evolving wilds magically able to make all the mana work since the mana base is one of the issues with uh, Super Friends decks. Fatal Push is not gonna do a whole lot. Let's get a Planes here. So what Planeswalkers is the biggest problem here? Not even sure. It's probably a Johnny. But I mean... I don't think there's a way we can still win this game. So, do need to anguish the making right now before our opponent activates any more planeswalkers. Alright, so I think we do anguish the making the Ajani rather than anything else. And say go. And hopefully our opponent just activates one of these lands. Nope, another one. Sorin. Alright, at least our opponent's having fun. Tragic Arrogance revealed. Well, that's pretty appropriate, I guess. 
Tragic Arrogance is not great in a Planeswalker deck since you'll end up killing your own Planeswalkers with it. But if you have exactly one Planeswalker, I guess it's good. Meanwhile, Jace is gonna ultimate soon. So we could save the Fatal Push to fight through Jace's ultimate so we can still resolve one of our spells. But I guess we need to fail push the token, but we're still gonna take seven. So yeah, we're dead. The five damage from the Sorin is what did us in. Oh well, at least our opponent got to kill us pretty quickly thanks to Gideon. So on to the next one. All right, let's take a look at our opener, which looks quite good. We've got a lot of cheap revolt enablers and some good payoff cards. Opponent with turn one renegade map. And we are probably going to do the same here. It's either that or a tapped grove. And yeah, now that we picked up the liberator, I think it's just easy to play the map. Next turn, sacrifice it. And then play the liberator. The only question here is, do we get a swamp with the renegade map or another forest? We do want a lot of green here with this hand but at some point we might need black mana as well. Opponent with their own revolt start. They have Narnam Renegade. And they might be holding on to a walking ballista from the looks of it. Either that or they have a comma trick they could still play. I think we actually get a forest here rather than a swamp just because next turn then we can go Unbridled Growth plus Scrounging Bandar and the, bro and the growth could still fix our mana for a while and we have plenty of plays lined up without needing black mana. So yeah, let's get a forest. But I think we still play out a Grove just in case our opponent has a Thalia. Play the Liberator. And say go. So now I'm interested to see if our opponent attacks with the Renegade or keeps it on defense. They're just gonna run out to Nissa, Vastwood Seer, which gets them a forest. Don't have removal for it currently, so it might be a problem in the future. Opponent does attack with the Renegade, I'll happily take two since we get to attack back for four. I think this turn is probably best if we just Growth plus Bandar. And then next turn we can sag the Growth and play the Rallier. Maybe get back the Growth. Seems better than playing Tracker here. So let's attack for four. And another interesting question is, where do we put the growth? I guess I'll put it on the plains. And then play the Bandar. And let's see if the opponent keeps attacking with the Renegade. They are mono green so far, but they did have Renegade map, which could indicate a second color. And there we see a rabbit bite. So the opponent fighting the Renegade with the Liberator, killing it. It's not technically fighting, it's just one creature dealing damage to another. And thanks to Death Touch, that works out quite nicely for the opponent. So a nice removal spell from mono green. And earlier in the game, we noticed their opponent potentially still had something in hand, so they could have the Primal Ballo giving their creature plus one plus one for each forest they control, which may also be an explanation for why they are so aggressive with the Renegade, trading two damage for four. So here, we can definitely keep attacking with the Scrounging Bandar.
pull and takes it. So here we have the option of sacking the growth and then playing Renegade Rally or getting back Liberator plus playing another growth or we can go Tireless Tracker plus growth. I don't think this is going to come down to card advantage if our opponent's trying to combo kill us with bump spells. So I would rather get the better board presence first, which means sacking the growth. And growth on the planes. And then play Renegade Rallier. Getting back the Liberator, which also will have Revolt, of course. So a 4-3 once again. I'm happy to trade the Renegade and the Renegade Rallier. Opponent main phases the Narnum Renegade while they could have maybe attacked first. I think our opponent's just happy playing defense at this point. So I don't think we need to move any counters from the Bandar since these can both attack into the opponent's board. Another Green Wheel Liberator, all right. So I like attacking with both the Rallier and the Liberator here. For opponent trades, we get to go Tracker, land, make a clue into Liberator. All right. Does their opponent have a pump spell? Yeah, they do, Primal Bellow. But they're using it on an Elvish Visionary on defense, which is certainly acceptable. Also a little risky since we could have had a removal spell in response. So we get to go tracker. Play land, get a clue. And then play liberator. Which has revolt thanks to our creature dying. We can slowly start accumulating card advantage here. Opponent does still have this Nissa, Which is one land away from transforming so... We have to try and pressure our opponents so they can't run away with the game thanks to Nyssa. And I don't think we want to move any counter here since again our two creatures can already attack into this board. Evolving Wiles is a nice one giving us two clue tokens. So let's do that right now. Probably getting a swamp here. And now the question is, do we sack this growth? I think we do, just to see what we draw. Finding a removal spell would be nice. And there we go, perfect. Vengeful Rebel could do this on the Narnum Renegade, but I think that's probably too greedy. Probably just better to take out the Nyssa. And I think I want to do that post-combat in case her opponent has another pump spell. So let's attack with the 4-3 and the tracker, which already got us enough value, so I don't mind trading it. Instead, so does our opponent have another pump spell? They do blossoming defense. On the visionary all right they would still trade here which is totally fine and now we got rid of the opponent's pump spell and now vengeful rebel should be able to finish off Nissa unless her opponent's last card is another pump spell all right that works and I think I'd rather develop our board a little bit more all right sweet Alchemist's file is fine. And Sylvan Advocate, alright, so that does block our current board pretty nicely. So I think we want to move some counters with these Bandars. And I think we'll move three counters total onto the Vengeful Rebel here. so that it can profitably attack into the Sylvan Advocate. And Renegade Rallier is also sweet, so can get back another Green Wheel Liberator perhaps. 
I think we can start by sacking a clue for more information. Find Solm Recruit, which is also nice. Let's attack with the rubble. Opponent might use a vial, and they do. In that case, let's see, is it better to get back the Liberator? Or is it better to just play the Recruit? The Bandar is not attacking. I um, think I like playing the Recruit. Could have also gone back maybe another Bandar with the Rallier. But this seems fine. Now we have two good attackers into the Advocate. Alright, opponent with a Fleet Wheel Cruiser, although we have a 3-powered First Striker in play, so it's not going to be able to attack. Yeah, our opponent might want to rethink that. So, a uh, small misstep from the opponent there. Uh, Bandar probably doesn't want to move anything. Find a land, so let's sack a clue. Find Walking Ballista. So, let's go ahead and offer the trade here. If your opponent takes it, they're dead to a Ballista for two. And I'm fine trading the Recruit for the Advocate here. And let's see if the opponent blocks. They do. So they take six. And... I think getting back the Liberator is probably the best here. And I think we sag the clue, even though that gets rid of our only Revolt Enabler, just because we want to find lands to make this Walking Ballista bigger. Alchemist's File. It's gonna be... it's gonna have to be pretty good here from the opponent to get out of this. I uh, don't think we need to move any counters. So let's go to combat. And we still have exactly 8 power here. And of course we still have the walking ballista that could come down and shoot the opponent for 3. Alright, that's gonna do it for this gameplay. I wanna thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day.